What's going on y'all? Welcome back to The Madness. Today we're going to be talking about the input module, specifically the input USB part of the block. So why would you care? Let me give you a quick scenario. All right, so imagine you just had the perfect take, whether or not it's guitar, vocals, whatnot. So you just got this take, you've got all these effects baked right in, right? You go to your, you know, your recording engineer, the mixer, and he's like, yo man, this is like, there's way too much reverb, there's way too much compression, there's too much of this, too much of that, there's too little of this, and you baked the effects right in, so you can't change it, you know, you can't change what you gave him. Now, in come the input USB block. Why is this important? It's important because if and when you take the direct input part of the recording when you're using the axe effects, you can take that signal and redress it up with all of the effects and whatnot that you used on the way in, except you can modify them with a reamp track. And I'll show you how to do that right now. All right, so this is just me playing right through the axe effects here. You can see it right on the screen. So that's what it sounds like with just the effects that I have on it. You know, sounds pretty good. I like it. So now that we're in Cubase, this is my DAW. Like I think I said before, I don't remember what the hell I do here. So we have a couple different goals here. We want three different tracks, really. So the first track can be the one that you are going to give them anyways. The one with the doctored up signal, you know, the way that we think we like it right now. So the second one is going to be the DI. The DI is going to be what we doctor up to get the variable output. That could be this one, but it could be anything else as well. And, and that's why, that's the important one, right? We're just going to follow these steps right to the T. So first one is make sure that your uh, audio interface is set to AxeFX 3. So studio, audio connections, and since these are our inputs, it automatically registered the AxeFX 3 as our main audio inter interface. So that's what we're doing here. And the outputs is set to not connected at the moment. So <clears throat> right now we just got this one. But let's go ahead and add another bus. And this one's gonna be a mono bus, and we're gonna call that DI. And then we're gonna set that to number five, because number five on our axe effects is our mono interface, or is our DI interface. We also wanna make sure that our setup is set to 48 kilohertz, which is right here, hardware sample rate. Okay, got that, now we're gonna move on. So we got axe effects one and two, we got 48 kilohertz, Connect your guitar instrument. Mine's already connected for this tutorial. We'll record both processed output and the DI. So create a mono track named DI. So add an audio track. This one's going to be our stereo track. And I'll just call this reference track. And then we'll create another one. That's a mono track. And oh, look at that. I already selected DI for us. So here we go. And we'll name this one DI. All right, so we got these two tracks right here. What's next? So now we're gonna go over here and we're gonna hit ARM on both of our tracks, making sure the software input monitoring is not enabled. And now in order to find that, you're gonna go to stereo input and then under the fast driver audio system, direct monitoring is not enabled. And so now we're gonna go and ARM both tracks by holding control and clicking both of these. And then I set my metronome on and now I'm gonna grab my guitar and uh, record a track real quick. Let's go ahead and listen to what the DI track sounds like. All right, so now you can hear that it is very much a basic version of the riff that I just played. It's pre-processed input from my guitar. Now what I want to do is I want to reamp that track in case I want to change the way that my original reference track sounded in the future. According to these directions, we have to go to the setup IO audio and make the following two changes to change the digital input source to USB channel 5 and 6 and the input 1 source to digital. Now we can do that right in the Axe Effects Axe Edit screen. If we go to Tools, 
set up, which it was just open, but I just wanted to show you how to get there. Audio. And now we're going to want to change this input one from analog to digital. We're going to change digital input source from AES or SPDIF to channel 56 USB. For step two, let's go and mute the reference guitar one track in Cubase. So that's right here. It is muted at the moment. All right. And now we go and change the output of our DI track to AxeFX output five slash six. All right, so now remember output five slash six is gonna be our DI. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna to go to studio, audio connections, outputs. We're gonna create a new bus, so add bus. We're gonna call this DI out. It's gonna be a mono. And then it's gonna be selected as out five. There we go. And since we're following directions here, right down here, this knob is the DI and we're gonna set the gain to negative 6 db just as it says right here next solo your di track soloed and rewind and then hit play and you should hear the di being processed by our xfx3 preset so let's go ahead and do that so you should know right now that this is pretty cool right we're listening to the DI track being sent back through the Axe Effects in USB and then is being processed again. So now what happens when I press play, right, and I start changing things in the Axe Effects? You say the drive. Or what if the delay? I want it a little bit longer. See what I'm saying? That's pretty cool. We're basically there now. We just have to do a couple more steps and we can fully reamp a track and record the differences in the tone that we were just tinkering with a second ago, right? So what we want to do is we record the reamp, create a stereo track. So add a new one, stereo out. I'll call this uh, reamp and then we will Let's see, what does it want? Name this track Guitar Reamp 1 and set its inputs to AxeFX inputs 1 and 2. So inputs is going to be stereo in. Okay. So now what's going to happen is important, right? So let's get right into that part. We've got this reamp track, stereo in, stereo out. We've soloed the DI track. Remember that our input is digital. And now when I go to record this, and per se, I went in here and I changed this to drive on. So now the track that was once so, you know, somewhat driven is now going to be pretty overdriven. Okay, now let's go record that track so you can hear it. So that is the entirety of what I use the USB input for. So obviously, if we use the ref we listen to the reference track versus the solo track, it's significantly different. Listen to the, the reamp now. And that's what this is all about. I appreciate you guys stopping in. Appreciate you guys taking time to look at this video. I hope you got something out of it. But as always, y'all, I'll catch you on the flippy floppy.